I'm back on another backpacking adventure finally. Back to the Bridger Wilderness, otherwise known as the Wind River Range. This time, however, first time I'm in the south end. The parking lot is absolutely packed. This is Big Sandy. Never been to Big Sandy before. I've always gone out of Elkhart, Green River, and for the eclipse, I was on the other side of the range, Trail Lakes. On this adventure, I'm going to be meeting up with uh, someone I met online a long time ago, but have never met. Uh, he's been coming to the range for many years now and stays out for tens of days at a time, usually 40, 50 days at a time. Here's a first view, good view of some of the scenery we'll be getting into. Not quite the Mirror Lake yet, which is before, let's see, it goes Mirror, then Dad's, then Marm's, which is where I'm heading. But it should be at the end of this meadow here, so I'm making pretty good time. I, uh, coming in with a heavier load than normal since I'm out longer than I've ever been before. So I think my total weight's probably just over 33 pounds. I have, uh, well, yeah, probably a little more than that because I have extra goodies that Eric asked me to bring in, so maybe 34 pounds. Well, I made it to our meeting point at 649 and Eric has been here. He's apparently camped at the top of that knoll there, which is where I was going to camp, so that works out well. Okay, I made it up to the top. This is the mysterious Eric. Hi. <laughs> this is Eric's tent that I'm borrowing for the night, at least actually for the entire time, but figured I'd set it up first for this night so we could just see how it all worked and uh, try it out. Enjoying the Alpine Glow in the background, which is kind of hard to see until we move up. But yes. And there's Marm's Lake out over there. We'll be going up and over that in just a little bit. We made the top of Illinois Pass. That's Texas Pass over there, which we will likely be coming down on the way out. So today's pass is going to be Macon Pass, which is right there above Macon Lake. Very much easier than Illinois Pass was yesterday. And we camped, uh, well, just to the left of the little saddle over there. And that uh, you see some scrubby trees and a big rock kind of near the shore over that way where we camp for the night. A nice little area.
here's the west end of Grave Lake. We came down uh, kind of sort of where the ridge of pine trees are from uh, Macon Pass. We had the perfect lunch spot here. A nice little beach area. And we're going to head up to the top of Pilot Knob. Well, Eric and I did finally make it to the top of Pilot Knob. But we waited until after dinner time. So had a little rain come through, though most of the storms stayed to the south of us, off over that direction. You can see the little beach we were on earlier, that little point sticking out there on the right side of the lake. The precipitous drop-off. It's very windy this morning, though it's a little calmer right now, but we were going to go over into Baptiste Lake. There's Mount Hooker right there, but we decided we didn't want the wind fest, so we're just going to head over to a larger lake and down that drainage back to, I think it's the Bears Ear Trail on the other side of Pilot Knob. So that's where we're heading right now. So here we are at the eastern end of Grave Lake. You see that little fisherman guy over there? We were in the saddle. Uh, now that he keeps moving uh, off to the left of him. That's Pilot Knob in the center there. And uh, there's actually a little mini saddle that you can't really see from here. And then the bigger saddle uh, that you should be able to see, hopefully. So that's where we were camped last night, and you can't really see kind of where we came, but we came down that valley, uh, sort of right above where that guy is, but you can't really see it because it's hidden by the mountain. And there's Mount Hooker hiding behind Pilot Knob. Now we stop for lunch and I'm doing a little foot therapy, getting them nice and clean and relaxed. Also got to clean out the uh, socks and shoes because they're very dusty from the trail. So having a good day, beautiful weather so far, uh, hopefully it keeps up. Been out of the wind mostly since we've been going on the, the Bears Ear Trail. We just hit the junction here, had to cross this creek. I haven't looked at the map to know which one it is, but. Now well, we came from over that ridge, from Valentine Lake, and uh, just kind of contoured up along this mountain here. And there's the path going to Little Valentine Lake. And you probably can't see him on 1080 video, but there's some people camped right out there, straight ahead. And they have what looks like a bear fence or something next to their 
tent. Not sure what they're doing. Pretty good sized group, looks like at least six people. Maybe that's just packs, but anyway. And then there, over there's little Valentine. And we're heading up to the uh, Lizard Head Plateau. So we're enjoying a little break out of the wind. Probably can't tell that it's windy. Maybe see some of the uh, weeds over there uh, blowing, but it's very windy today. But we'll apparently be going up and around uh, that little ridge and going around on the other side of that uh, mountain, I guess, Chauvinette Mountain, we think. And around the little thing out there on the other side of this bowl. And we'll be coming down a valley to Cathedral Lake. But that's not Cathedral Lake down at the bottom of that bowl. It's a little bit more around the corner there. So that's the plan for today. I have some really weird rock formations for the Wind River Range here. We camped at Pilot Knob a couple nights ago. Should be right about there. And Macon Lake should be right about there. Just barely over that pile of rocks in front of me. Waukesha Pass is that snowfield. We think that is Wind River Peak out there in center of frame way out in the distance, which we'll hopefully get to later in the trip. Here's this gully that uh, we were looking at well, not this particular part. It'd be over that knob that you see over there on the right where we were before. We're going to be headed for that uh, first large lake. And suddenly the wind got calm. <laughs> Briefly. Right now the wind is pretty tame, but it's been blowing me all over. It's been so windy at times that it's picked up water out of the lake and sprayed me and when we were in that other campsite sprayed it through the trees tops of the trees probably at least 30 40 feet in the air not sure how much wind speed you need to do that but it's pretty impressive
the view at Mendarin Lake. We were hoping to do Nancy Pallister's route out of here up to the Lizard Head Plateau, but that's not going to work too well for us at least. It uh, goes up this ramp right there and then continues and goes over, drops down a little bit and then up that and around that little knob. And we climbed all the way up to uh, where uh, Right about there, it looks just where the edge of the uh, shadow is. Got that far without packs, just checking it out, and uh, decided that it just wasn't worth the effort. You know, we're not that risky. We try to be safe here. Don't want any scuffs. I do have a few scuffs, though. Uh, a couple right there. Looks like three of them. Well, I guess four if you count that one as a separate one. But doing pretty good so far with all the bushwhacking. But beautiful day. Tomorrow, because we can't do this route, we're going to backtrack to Cook Lake and go up the south side of that to get to the uh, Lizard Head Plateau. You can just barely see it through the trees, but that's Cook Lake down there that we just passed. Came up through the trees. Well, we ended up coming out right there, but ideally should have come out over there. And running up a lot of boulder field. And some trees to get to the top. This is the easy route, by the way. We made it up here. You can see bear's ears out in the center of the frame there. We came down that valley to the left of it. That is no longer Cook Lake there that you can see. It's hidden from view now. I forgot what the name of the one in the middle is. That's, ironically enough, Middle Lake behind it. Cathedral Lake is hidden up the valley there. Well, I forgot to start to do a video down there in the saddle, but the steep climb that we had just done up from Cook Lake was only 800 feet of the eh, 1800 to 2000 that we eventually have to get done. So, now we're coming up from the saddle here, and you can't see the top anymore, and really it wasn't the top anyway, but we're climbing up this now, and it'll be about another 400 feet, we think, that's fairly steep like this, and then it'll get not so bad. <laughs> or so we hope. But still uphill, yep, still uphill, but so far weather's great, and... Uh, uh, knock on wood, uh, the wind is not an issue yet today, so hopefully that uh, has passed, because that's kind of sucked the last few days. We'll be going up this uh, basin and heading off, most likely, at the top right, just below that snow field, go over that little uh, ridge that happens to be there. And then uh, hit the Lizard Head Trail. We're almost to the top. Straight ahead is where we came through. Can't really see the screen, but I would say probably right about there. Eh, too far over. No. 
came through there. So right about there. And we have a little bit left to go. You can see uh, Eric up ahead. Well, we made it over that last saddle and now heading toward the other saddle to then turn left and make the Lizard Head Trail. It's all downhill from there. Yeah, as Eric says, it's all downhill from there. Almost there. I took a high line. Eric took a low line. He's still down there a little bit. But that uh, valley behind him, that drop off, is where we camped last night. Probably a good uh, 1,500 feet below uh, where we are now, at least. So, after a break, here is the other side of the saddle. We're just going to head down the flat spot until we hit up with the uh, Lizard Head Trail. So there's Lizard Head, where we camp at the base, over the top of that treed hill on the other side of that. And then over there is a Cirque of Towers, which we're not going to, at least not yet, maybe later. This is the lowest of the deep lakes. I've been walking somewhat solo most of the day. Eric's feeling uh, a little poop for whatever reason or something, so he's been kind of in a lower gear than he had been previously. So I got here first. Usually he beats me on the uphills. That's the next deep lake on that shelf off in the distance. You can see the cascade coming down from it. And we'll be going to the upper deep lake, which will be between uh, through that saddle there between these two mountains. In case they haven't been in a picture or video yet, my shoes are not tan. They are solid black. Trails a bit dusty around here, the normal trails, especially when horses travel on them. Well, we essentially made it to the top of that saddle, to the third highest lake. 
if you can find the elk trail, it stays over on the pretty much very left hand side. And that seems to be the easiest route up. So this is Upper Deep Creek Lake. And we're just enjoying sitting on a rock here, watching all the fish jumping and swimming around. So today's adventure will be getting the little bit of saddle right here. You know, climbing through the grass and rocks to get up onto what is known as the ramp that will take you all the way to River Wind River Peak, which is probably just behind uh, that highest point way out there in the middle of the screen. I failed to point out that that was what that was last night uh, or yesterday, and that's Engineer's Notch. As you can see the big V out there, it's on the north side of it. Now we made it to the saddle between Chimney Rock and Wind River Peak. Engineer's Notch or Surveyor's Notch is behind uh, that little ridge right there. So we need to get uh, probably just past uh, the White Rocks and then it's not too bad after that I guess, but we'll see. I forgot to mention that might not be able to see very easily here, but left of Lizard Head, which is a very prominent one, tallest one you see out there, are some of the northern peaks that are probably 50 miles away, maybe. So we had a nice rest, and now we're going to head up. And probably can't see him, but Eric is already over there. He's been running low on energy again, so we had a long rest. Well, we made it. There it is, the top. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a nice place for... Just in case it didn't show up on the summit video, the butterflies are going crazy up here, even though there aren't any flowers for them to be up here. They're all over the summit.
I'm sure it won't capture the colors, but it's an interesting sunset from Wind River Peak. Rain shower there and off to the right. After hundreds of nights in the back country, with his backpack under his feet, here at Wind River Peak, we had a mischievous rodent tearing up his backpack and chewing into the strap right there. Not cool. Didn't seem to touch, well, he nibbled on the trekking pole handle too, apparently. <clears throat> so beware, if you camp up here, the vicious rodents that like salt, apparently. Sun's fully up now, and the range is lit up. <clears throat> And we'll be heading down here soon. So now we're heading south off the saddle down toward Teo Lake. Teo Lake comes into view as you work your way around the south shoulder of Wind River Peak. We're hiking up the Coon Lake Trail. There's one river peak. And here is Coon Lake. We're going along the south side, whereas the trail, normal trail, goes to the north or east side. Coon Lake Pass should be right up over there, but I don't think we're doing that today. The last I knew. This is looking back at the shelf. Sometimes you have to drop down to into the forest or through flower meadows or whatever to easily get where you're going, but you're going to end up going off just to the left as that uh, rock cliff comes down the edge there.
and the uh, treed hill in the distance to go in between there. Well, if you were coming from this direction, it looks like you would want to get on that ledge roughly, I guess, kind of where those pine trees in the foreground are. Just try to get up on top of that and stay on top of it until you reach the Coon Lake area. You don't want to be on top of that one. That's too high. Some nice spires there. If you get tired, you can lay down for a little rest, but wouldn't trust it. Now, I'm sure you can't hear it, but there's some rumbling of thunder down valley and looks like on the other side, possibly where we just came, looks like maybe even some rain on the other side of those mountains. And we stopped at the base of Temple Pass. And it has some unfriendly clouds coming over the top of it. So we might get some rain as well. It looks like I need another bath. Not sure how my legs got dirty so far up, but whatever. Now that the storm has passed, uh, cooking dinner. Chili mac with beef. Oh yeah. So another fine morning, though uh, a little windy. And this morning's objective is to get over Temple Pass which is that outcropping you know, just right to the right of the outcrop of rocks right there, that small saddle. And then later in the day, uh, either before or just after lunch probably, we'll go over Jackass Pass and into the Cirque. Well, we made it to the top, but we were wrong trail took us to the west side of the pass rather than the east side and the uh, clouds in the distance don't look all that friendly anymore We've made it to Temple Lake on this kind of old high route that stays well above the lake.
very difficult to see, but it looks like the if you're heading the other direction, this is where the trail split. The low route stays pretty much straight over that way, and the high route kind of heads over that way. And we're making our way toward the end of the valley. And you can see the Circa Towers over there. Jackass Pass, which we'll have to see how the weather goes. It's nowhere near as dark, though it kind of shades a little darker gray over that way. We've had this very few sprinkles. And the wind is fairly tolerable now, nice and light breeze. A lot of pine beetle kill down this way. Now we had stopped just before the crossing of the Clear Creek Outlet as it was sprinkling a little bit. But now you can see sunny blue skies. So we're going to go ahead and work our way over to Jackass Pass. Yeah, this is the weather we really want to see now. Nice and sunny. Of course, Mother Nature is playing games with us now. So it's gotten cloudy again. Thankfully not dark though. So we're picking our way across the boulder fields on the climbers route across Jackass Pass. You can see. Okay. Okay. So he's going to try going the all the way up and over the boulder thing. I think I'll just take the standard route, which you can see some people climbing up over there. Not sure where the normal trail goes, but you can see a trail going off over the uh, saddle that way. Well, Eric convinced me to take the high trail, so that's where it comes out. Hey. Hey. Awesome, enjoying God's creation. So here we are at the top of Jockass Pass, heading down. So welcome to the uh, famous Cirque of Towers. I don't know the order of all of them, but they're... Variety of famous peaks here, you know, that people love to come climb. Well, we're going to leave our nice idyllic spot here in the center of the cirque and head over and get staged to camp near the base of Texas Pass tomorrow, which is that little snow patch you can see off in the distance there. Now you can look back across the Lonesome Lake and at least some of the peaks that you can easily see. I guess there's one right there as well. 
Pangora, I believe. And we came over the right side of that pass, the west side. And Jackass Trail actually goes over the left side, the official trail, not the climber trail. And now we're heading up uh, this trail here toward Texas Pass, I guess. One of many, apparently. But At least two. So my campsite for the night. Lots of nice flowers. You can see me drying my bag. Got a little wet on the edges last night for some reason. Not sure if I had flipped it out onto the wet grass somehow or what. But I think I got it dry this morning, but just in case, we're uh, making sure. So this is Eric. And Eric has hit a fantastic milestone. It's possible it could have been last night, but he knows for certain it's this night, you know, no matter what. Uh, but he has spent 500 nights in the Wind River Range since 2001, was it? Yep. It was the first time I came here, 2001. 2001. So 500 nights in those 19 years. Uh, and he's going to celebrate with some uh, bacon jerky. Hey, he doesn't get too much better than that, right? So, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, only one of these per ration. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> yeah. And disregard my drying socks there. <laughs> but check out the view, huh? Isn't that yeah, awesome? A pretty sweet spot. Yeah. You got Temple Peak way out in the background and Mount Mitchell over there. And that was uh, War... War bonnet. War bonnet. And then the warriors to the side. Okay. Yep, and Pingora, I guess, right next to us over there. But, yep, uh, an awesome achievement. Probably not a lot of people can say that, so we'll have to see how it is, you know, if it's been worth the wait all this time. Always good. It's always good, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon can't be bad, so... Unless you're a vegetarian, but it's one of my special treats, that's for sure. Good. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Michael. It's been great having you along. You yeah, know, it's been, and it's nice been quite an adventure. Yeah. You know, this is possibly our last night because I think we'll be able to easily get to Marms Lake, uh, you know, fairly early unless the weather sucks. You know, it's hard hard to say. Uh, you know what'll happen. You know, once we cross that uh, pass tomorrow, if we get the same thing we did today, you know, it might slow mm -hmm. us down a bit. So, yeah. uh, yep, it's been fun. Quite the adventure. Probably pushed myself harder than I would have normally if I was just by myself. <laughs> right. Yeah, me too. You know, it's good. It's yeah. Have you need to feed off somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any advice uh, for? Someone wanting to do the winds in general or gear or anything like that? I would say take your time. You know, enjoy your hike and don't rush. Because um, it seems like a lot of people are rushing around in the mountains these days. And, you know, I've certainly taken my time. And, uh, you know, go back to the same spot again and again. They're always beautiful and they're always different. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Excellent. Thank you. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not much more to reach the top of Texas Pass. We're filling up on some nice fresh snow melt. And the view down Texas Pass. So kind of directly across from at least the, the channel that Texas Pass makes is Illinois Pass that we sort of started the, our big huge loop 
going over. So as I predicted then, we're going to be coming down Texas Pass. Well, we made it down Texas Pass, past that upper lake. Here's the middle lake with a morning jogger who has stopped now. And uh, Shadow Lake would be over the hill down in the further down the valley. I don't think we'll ever really get to see it since we're taking the high route out like we did coming in. So this will probably be the last uh, good footage. Cause then we'll be in trees and trees suck. Yeah, no good views. So. Come on, there's all pretty lakes down in the trees. Well, there are pretty lakes in the trees, but I don't like being in the trees. At least that's what people tell me. Well, we might be exiting at the right time because it is a very hazy, smoky. There must be some major fire going on to the west. Because it's never looked anywhere near like this since we've been out here. Trailhead is in sight. Privy parking lot. So, I actually left Eric at the last uh, major intersection. His back's been bothering him today. So, we've taken the uh, much slower time getting out, taking lots of breaks. So I came out to get the truck call already. But it was a good 11 days. So, but I can definitely smell the smoke in the air now. So, not sure I would do any longer than that. 11 is probably my max. Probably 7 or 8 is my normal that I would deal with, but I think uh, it's been a great adventure and uh, thankful to be able to do it.